welcome to this evening's session. I'm Susan, co-founder and host of GCTV Live and absolutely delighted to be bringing these incredible guests to you throughout this month. A big thank you to our sponsors, Vigorate, of course, for making all of this possible. So tonight's session features Keith Alexander. Keith is a Steinberg product specialist with decades of practical experience working in the broadcast, game, digital and film industries. He currently designs soundscapes for these from his recording studio in Dublin. He also provides remote recording and audio post-production services to the advertising and marketing industries. Keith's worked with some of the most influential and highly regarded companies on the planet and tonight we're lucky to have him leading a session for us. Supporting him in this session will be GoCreate Academy co-founder and audio expert Peter Stone, who will monitor your questions and feed them through to Keith. So, without further ado, I'll hand you over to Keith for what promises to be a fascinating session. I'm Susan and you're watching GCTV Live. Hi guys, well actually it's not quite just to Keith, it's to Keith and me because I'm so delighted to have Keith joining us tonight. Hi Keith, how are you doing? How are you? How's it going? Very you can hear good. me okay, yeah? I think so, I think so. And uh, I'm just made up to have Keith with us. So uh, for you guys, you know, you're going to get a double dose of wonderful Steinberg stuff and obviously <laughs> we'll benefit from... Um, Keith's wonderful experience and keep your questions coming in. I'll be feeding them to Keith as we go through. So I hope you really enjoy totally. it. I know I'm going to. Keith, I'll hand it over to you. Brilliant. So um, hi, how are you? I hope all everyone's well out there. I hope everything's OK for you. And I presume that you guys are in here just to do some learning for podcasting and, you know, making your own content, being creative coming up with something extraordinary. I suppose you all have brilliant ideas about what you want to do, how you want to share that with the world and, you know, your views on whatever you are and however you're developing your podcast. And listen, it's just such an amazing thing that you've actually taken this step so far. You know what I mean? There's so many people out there that just turn around and go, oh, geez, I'd love to, but, you know, that wouldn't be me or I'd never be able to. Or And you'd make it the first step. And maybe some of you are doing podcasts already or making your own podcast and you just want to improve. So that's all good. Listen, I have headphones on. I can't even hear myself. I'm probably shouting. Ah, oh, there we go. That's better. You see, if I don't have them on, I can't hear anyone else. We have loads of wiring going on in this room and it's unbelievable, right? So anyway, so what I thought we'd do is run through a bit of. OK, so imagine yourself and you're sitting there and you got your brilliant idea. I'm going to do a podcast. You kind of got an idea of how to shoot it. Maybe I'll shoot it on an iPhone or maybe I'll go and get a recorder or I don't know, some sort of hardware that you might want to look at. And you sit down, you script your script or you come up with your concepts or you come up with your interviews and stuff. And that's brilliant. But tragically, what you are not is a sound engineer of decades of experience <laughs> okay i'm not a farmer of decades of experience i don't know how to grow stuff right <laughs> well i do but anyway you know it's a metaphor right so what i'm saying to you is i'm here to help you with an aspect of podcasting that's very 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 regularly overlooked and the amount of times I'd listen to, even on professional streams, the professional, um, what do you call it, platforms, there is an awful lot of podcasts, including professional podcasts. And I must admit, the sound quality leaves an awful lot to be desired. Now, I heard that Dom was in last week and he was showing you a thing called WaveLab Cast. So if you guys caught that, Super. Wave Lab Cast is a piece of software that we've been looking at for the past, I don't know, however long. And it does an awful lot of work for you. And it's brilliant. And we can have a quick look at, I just want to play some stuff out of that for you just to help us understand a bit of the recording process. Okay. This is all about, you know, the toys, the fun bits, the... Mm, oh, if only I had another 150 quid, I could spend it on this. 
<laughs> this is all the fun stuff that we can get our head around okay so again if you have any questions just ask peter there stop me at any stage okay any stage we can roll it back we can come back and look at whatever we have to look at okay so imagine me and i love what do i love motorcycles okay i personally love motorcycles but I w I've got great plans and ideas and thoughts of how I could come up with a podcast for motorcycles. Man, it's going to be brilliant. I can get my mates down. One's a mechanic. The other's a racing driver. We could come up together and we could do this whole thing. Brilliant. Let's do it. Lads, what about this podcast for motorcycles? We're in. Right. What do we do? Okay. So you come up with a plan, right? first things first you need somewhere to record okay then you need something to record to or record on um and then how does that work with everybody are they all going to be able to get into the room is are you going to start recording all this at four in the afternoon and mr mechanic is still in the garage trinkering away with his tools and and, and mr racing driver happens to be in mexico doing a race you know, so there's there are logistics as regards coming up with this sort of stuff. Even the most basic two people talking into a microphone, getting your thoughts across, getting your podcast across. There's an awful lot of think about before you even take that massive leap of hitting the record button. OK, I'm sure we have loads of people on here that have dealt with um, dealing with scripting and you know, putting the, 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 the wire frame of your podcast together. So what I want to start you thinking about is what you need, how it all comes together, how you take all those recordings and put them into something else and start cobbling together this wonderful thing that's going to be your podcast. OK, so let's pair it right back. OK, because I'm sure there's people on here and they, they just they don't know one end of a microphone to the other. OK, so we can take it right back to that. And I'm just going to scoot across a couple of options for you. OK, technology wise. Now, first things first, you're going to say is he's a professional. He's got all this amazing gear. It costs an absolute fortune. I'll never be able to manage that. Well, to be honest with you, I'm bringing you some gear that isn't actually very expensive. OK, don't start stressing on day one about you being able to get the most incredible recording ever. OK, on day one. OK, like anything, like a chippy, right? Like a carpenter. The carpenter walks out one day, he gets his first set of chisels and he learns how to use the chisels. He uses the correct chisel for the correct stroke and develops that knowledge of themselves. So for you to go out with basic equipment, let's just say really basic equipment, and start recording your participants, recording you, recording things like sound effects, interviews, um, I don't know, vox pops. Vox pops are when you go out onto the street and you start talking to people and you say, well, what do you think about, I don't know, uh, the current situation with Boris Johnson or do you like uh, whoever, right? And you get the response from the person, you take the recordings home and you put that in as part of your show. OK, now I won't be dealing necessarily with the editing, the mixing, the putting all that together, but we'll have a look at some technology that I brought down. OK, this is really simple technology. OK, that won't freak you out. And it may be familiar to an awful lot of you as well. But there's an awful lot of you out there that don't necessarily uh, wouldn't this wouldn't be part of their every day. OK, so what's a microphone? Right. So what I would do is let's consider a situation. You've got me, the host. OK. And Ted, who's my mechanic friend. And we want to talk about motorbikes. OK, so first things first, I suppose myself and Ted would come up with a subject. And we go, right, what do we need now? We're now we're going to be talking about, I don't know, the latest Honda 
CB 1000 or yes please if anyone wants to donate <laughs> um, you got to sit down you got to record yourselves okay so how do we do it Ted do you have any microphones uh, no well my crazy favorite uncle used to be in a band maybe he has a microphone so there is ways you don't have to go out and spend a fortune initially on the equipment you're getting there's always the second hand market classified ads you know there's an awful lot of people that go out and buy the best of the best and they just you know they sit down with it for a week and it's the greatest thing in the world or it doesn't necessarily suit them so there's an awful lot of good bargains out there but there's also manufacturers creating really 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 cool gear really solid kit and it's not that expensive okay so if i'm sitting down with myself and ted we need two microphones okay so let's look at a microphone first off this is just one type of microphone this is this is a micro the reason i picked this microphone is um this is what i work with uh in my everyday recording sound effects and that sort of stuff but the reason i wanted to show you this was because there's a couple of components on this microphone that you'll basically be able to recognize when you do go out and get a microphone so there's a million types of microphones okay there's two main ones that you're probably using for um podcasting and it's a dynamic um and a condenser microphone okay so the difference is the dynamic just works under its own power and the condenser uses needs power now you can either use a battery in the microphone in some models or there's a thing called phantom power and we'll deal with phantom power in a second because i want to go into recorders and interfaces as well and basically phantom power is a little bit of power coming down the lead into the microphone microphones powered up works beautifully okay so what's the difference well dynamic is kind of do you remember the rock stars you know you look at the they're going rah, 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 and they got the sm58 type live microphones on there they're not very sensitive and you know you got to kind of drive them a little bit because they're working under their own power whereas with the condenser microphones they, they work really really well under their own power and they're very sensitive you know what i mean so there's a million and one you could spend 60 quid on a microphone you could spend a hundred thousand million pounds on a microphone some of them are crazy i know you also have the usb option okay so this is something we'll be looking at um, in a little bit as well so you're looking for a bit of bang for your book so imagine I had this kind of microphone or one of those SM58s you know the, the old rock and roll ones you know so that's pointing towards me and it's pointing towards my mouth so I want to get Ted's opinion do I grab it and hold the microphone over to Ted you know suddenly now i'm getting loads of noise going through my microphone so what we really should be doing is trying to get two microphones okay and beg borrow or rent don't forget you know you can always rent them i mean you do it for an hour or two a week that you do your recording and then you take those recordings and you bring it to an editor and you do your stuff there you know you can get some really nice microphones and rent them otherwise you could get some usb microphones and they're going to cost you i don't know anywhere from 60 bucks right through to oh, a couple of hundred bucks you know so it's up to yourself there's this kind of thing right this is a this is a mic from steinberg right and this little microphone is a beauty it talks this way to me and basically you set it up there and now i'm chatting away on my microphone and that's my get two of these you get one of those and headphones and an interface for i think it's a hundred and something bucks you know so it's very achievable this sort of equipment okay i'll come back to that in a second okay so now we need a microphone for ted and we need a microphone for me so what kind of microphone do you go out and buy well the usb microphones are an option okay um ultimately they're not going to be the greatest microphones ever but you will get an opportunity to use them again and again you know so you could bring them to your mate's house do an interview down there go down to the local i don't know cafe
cafe, do a bit of an interview down there. One thing I will warn you about, though, you're going through the brochure with all these beautiful USB microphones and they're all down here. They're all miles away from the people. They're all going, oh, ha, 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 laughter, laughter as they're hosting their podcast. And they're all down on a coffee table about 15,000 feet away from their mouths. And these pieces of equipment aren't necessarily the most extraordinary pieces of equipment ever. They don't pick up, you know, sound waves from the center of the earth in immensely clean <laughs> fashion, right? They're not brilliant okay you're buying a microphone for 60 quid the grand if you have it 15 feet away from your mouth you're going to have an issue because you're going to catch an awful lot of the room okay so i'll go through your experience and listening to different spaces that you're recording in in a second okay lots to deal with here lads we could go all night it's going to be great so Imagine I bought a, a, a USB microphone. I don't think the first thing you should be considering is uh, just the microphone. Okay. You go... I heard a noise coming in there. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Hi, is that Keith. Earth? Hi. All good, Keith. It's all good. There was a Great. momentary glitch, but yeah, can carry on, fella. All right, man. I thought I thought the aliens were coming. I just had that noise in my head. Uh, uh, where was I? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the one thing to consider is, you know, the way I was, I was saying to you, I do my bit and I hand the microphone to Ted. When all this movement is going on with microphones and I'm holding it and there's, there's going to be a lead attached as well, right? So the microphone lead is what they call an XLR, right? And that just clicks in there like that, okay? Now, that movement can cause noise as well. Literally through the, the, the movement of the microphone, okay? So by me doing that and doing that, now I have noise, hand movement noise going through on my recordings. So now I have an extra issue. Not only am I shifting my microphone around, but I have an extra job to do to go and clean that audio up. So when you do consider buying a microphone, consider buying a microphone stand. And I don't mean a desktop stand, because if you can, or if one of your mates is in a band or something, you know, again, beg, borrow or rent these things. You don't have to break the bank by any stretch of the imagination. But a desktop stand is kind of tricky in that you do move around and you think, and you're reaching over for a pen and things are moving on the desk in front of you or the table or your kitchen table, okay, if that's where you ended up recording it. So that noise does end up on your recordings and it is a pig to get rid of, okay? So imagine you went off and you had the most amazing interview with the most amazing person ever. Imagine Joey Dunlop came back to earth with a host of, a of radiant angels singing and you had a five minute interview with him and before he went off into the heavens again you know you run out and you put it in joey what's the story and i wanted to ask you oh, and <laughs> right joey dunlop's a motorbike racing guy legend so you get the interview oh <gasps> can't believe it grab it race it home now you put it into your machine and you got all this handling noise going through it okay it's a disaster Take it from me. I, I, I've been that soldier. OK, so do look at other equipment that can save you an awful lot of pain and heartache. OK, hand movement through your microphones. So if you get a floor stand microphone that you can place your microphone on now, now you have your hands free just to jazz it up or you can just give directions, whatever you want to do, make notes. You can do all that sort of stuff while you're there and gesticulate as much as you want. So that's really, really important. Another really important piece of equipment for any sort of microphone is a pop shield, right? And pops are things like peas and bees. So when I say Peter Pepper, pick to pick a pick a pepper, pe pe pe, that's all big bangs on your recordings. And again, when you listen back to it, there are big bangs and they're so hard to clean up, you know, especially if you're not a professional sound engineer and you haven't spent the thousands and thousands of pounds on cleaning things up. OK, so 
just this situation here, right? This, this microphone. Okay. I just got this in the post from whoever, from Steinberg. I just ordered this from Steinberg. I get a mic lead going, uh, wherever the mic lead is, it's stuck in here. Okay. So my microphone now I click that in there. Okay. Sorry. Can you see that? So there my microphone goes, mic lead goes in there. And then that's fed to what they call an interface, an audio interface, right? Which is basically the interface between the real world, okay? And your computer. And it's a super option for any sort of recording of, of um, podcasts and anything else, right? I'll show you what an interface is and how it works really quickly in a second. But what I wanted to show you was initially this pop shield idea. Okay. So if I'm talking into this microphone, there's the diaphragm where the sound is picked up. Okay. And if I'm going Peter Pecker, peck the pe pe, right? It's going boom, 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 boom. So what you do is you get a, go, uh, a windshield or a pop shield, should I say. Okay. Do you see that? See the distance between that and that. So this catches the P's and the B's. I've got a big one on my actual microphone here. Okay. This is just demonstration. Okay. So I place that in there and I can go P, B, anything I want to do, press the button, ba, 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 and they'll be as clean as a whistle and save you tons of work on your edit. Because when you sit down and you listen to it, when you listen to your edit and you go boom, 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 for all the P's and the B's that you got going on, Again, you're going, oh no, how can I record that again? I have to go ahead and record it again. And it's a disaster. So to prevent, what we're trying to do is reduce the amount of work we have at the end of the day. Okay. So that's a microphone and that's the thing, right? The pop shield. And what I really would suggest to do is when you're going out to get your US, if you're going out to get a USB microphone, make sure it can be accommodated on a mic stand okay because that means you can take it off the desk onto your floor standing microphone and be able to get it into a nice proximity i'll talk about proximity in a minute okay so let me get rid of this for a second and the next thing was um i get my microphones i've got a beautiful microphone for me and a beautiful microphone for ted so where do we go with this? Okay. So we have a couple of options that we can look at. Handheld recorders is the first option, which means that you have an actual recording device handheld, believe it or not, that, hence the name. And you can walk around and you can do your interviews with it. You can, uh, with some model, there's a million and one, right? This is a, a type of handheld recorder. Okay, that's a kind of surround sound one. Uh, this type is just a normal stereo recorder. Okay, that I want to look at this again because there's some features on that that I really would look at. This is a super expensive, brilliant one, right? That's one I'd, I'd use professionally. But you can pick up handheld recorders from Zoom, from um, loads of different companies. Okay, and the brilliant thing about um handheld recorders is all you need is a little stereo one to start off with you don't need to go out and buy the bells and the whistles and go crazy you just need to get going and your experience will tell you okay where you need to go with that peter you're talking to me no no buddy i'm <laughs> no no sorry i got the aliens again <laughs> i'm listening rapidly, so don't worry brilliant so we have two options, right? Because we've two microphones and we've got our two mic stands. We've got our pop shields. Brilliant. We're in such great shape to start recording. So where are we going to be recording to? So let's just look at handheld recorders first, right? Do you remember I showed you the lead? This lead is called an XLR or a mic lead. Okay. And it's got three pins and there's the male and there's the female for obvious reasons, right? So, sorry, I'm losing my headphones. Um, you got the male and you got the female. Okay. So the male, uh, the female fits into the microphone and the male fits into something like this. Can you see that hole there? Yeah, you can in the light shines gorgeous, gorgeous ease. And you get these, this is a combi input. Okay. 
and that accommodates an XLR and a jack. You know that little thing that you get in your headphones? That's a jack. That's a mini jack or an eighth jack. Okay. You get bigger ones for your guitar leads, right? Quarter inch, boom, bang it in there. Rock and roll. Okay. But you also get handheld recorders with those as well. You see that? So now Ted and myself are sitting down Saturday. We're going to do our podcast, get the microphone, get the microphone leads. We set them up. Okay. We don't have them 15 feet away from our mouths. We have a nice proximity. See the proximity of my microphone there, right? If I had this microphone, I'd probably put it about there and I have my pop shield going. Okay, can you see that? So I'm not a a million miles away from the microphone, but I'm not right up there either. Okay, so I am basically giving it a nice, warm resonance. It's picking up most of my voice. I don't want to go for the FM radio late night sound. But I do want to be heard and I want to have a good signal to noise ratio, which means the signal coming from the microphone is going down into my recorder, whatever it is. If it's a handheld recorder or it's going into an interface, I'll look at the interface in a sec and we're getting a good signal off it. That's all I'm saying, right? So this is good proximity. Okay, we've got our mic, pop shield, etc. Lead goes down into this an interface, okay, or our handheld, okay? So here's my handheld. As I say, I've got loads of them sitting around here. And as I said to you, the handheld is great. So Mrs. Jessup, what do you think of, I don't know, the price of sugar nowadays? And then you shove that in her face and she gets her response. Now I'm not plugging a super duper microphone into this because it ships with microphones. Okay, so these microphones are perfectly good to do any sort of interviews as long as the proximity. Do you remember the saying to proximity? The proximity of your mouth to the microphone is in good shape. Okay, you don't want this recording too loud because if you shove it in their face, then it's going to distort. Okay, which is something we really have to avoid. Okay, but there's a good proximity. And now you can get loads of recorders with built in microphones. You can get the Zoom H1, which is a super simple little teeny tiny little. It's not a teeny tiny, but it's a small recorder. There's one big record button. There's a play button and a little display, hundred and something books. And you're away. okay, for doing quick interviews and stuff. And there's the majority of them have holes on the bottom. So you could put them on a mic stand as well if you wanted. You know, you need a little adapter, but you could do it if you wanted for hands free. Okay, I mean, I will always recommend somebody get something like this. This is a a handle for holding, you know, recorders like that. Okay, and this is super soft and it it absorbs all the sound coming from my old joints creaking and crocking, you know, and you walk around and you can use that and that and this is a suspension mount as well which is super important. It saves saves all the movement through the recorder and all this is going on to your recordings and you just need to avoid it if you possibly can. And the other major thing for anyone walking outside is to bring them with them a Tribble, okay, which isn't actually a Tribble. I only said that it's called a windshield. So there's my handheld recorder. I'm going to go and ask Mrs. Jessup about the price of sugar. Okay. And a gust of wind comes along and it goes all over your recordings and you can't hear what she just said. And you bring the recordings home. Brilliant interview about sugar with Mrs. Jessup. Really? Yeah, Oh man, it was the best interview I've ever heard. Cutting edge journalism. And then you sit down with Mrs. Jess or to edit your, 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 your recordings and all you hear is sugar, you know, desperate. Desperate, desperate. So another thing, if you do go handheld recorders instead of an interface, always a windshield, always a windshield. Even if it's still as still can be outside. It'll basically protect all your recordings, which is so super important. So super important. Just by the way, while I have you see that little thing? That's an SD card. 
is a little hard drive and that goes into most recorders so you record to the sd card generally take the sd card out into your computer and you import those into your editor okay just that's what happens with these things okay in the majority of cases there is one other little option that you might look at for a recorder now there's all sorts of versions there's versions from road and there's also a version from um oh yeah an android version an awful lot of this technology um would end up in ios or ipads or iphones okay um and the development of audio gear for ios or for android is very slow okay so if you did want to edit your show on android your options are fairly restricted though you can do it you do need to buy a driver to connect gear up to it but you can do it if you have an ipad that's absolutely viable as an option to do your editing and you know work that way as well okay just just to show you see that little set of microphones that plugs into my iphone and it turns my iphone into a field recorder or a handheld recorder mrs jessup what do you think of the old uh, price of sugar oh japers really and then you know so that is an option these are amazing microphones absolutely beautiful microphones and they plug into your into your phone so you can get android and you can get uh, ios versions of of these type of microphones okay so just to let you know right so we're, we're going through all sorts of options here does anyone have any questions while i rant on for hours about toys you know whilst you guys are pondering any sort of question and don't be worrying whatever the question is don't don't feel that it might seem a little silly doesn't matter somebody else in the room is thinking the exact same and they mightn't be able to speak out about it so if you can do the thing for them just say the question no no question is anyway silly do you hear me i want to hear everything you have to say keith now, uh, i have a question yeah. from a guy uh ben in vancouver um hello and, ben in vancouver and he's saying i wonder where I've he is my cousin <laughs> my nephew's over there he says i've got an android phone what do i do yes <laughs> okay so you have the options you have are limited and i'll be honest with you they are limited okay um there's a couple of recorders there's the am7 from zoom right and that would that's a, a little set of microphones just kind of like this okay and that will allow you plug in these the am7 mic microphones and that'll work as a field recorder it'll go you can go around you could do all your interviews sticking it in people's faces and getting the view of the century right. when you look at 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 interfaces there are some interfaces that work with um uh, uh android as well okay and ios more so the majority are geared towards um ios you need to get a driver for android okay uh i think it's about five or six books and i can't remember the name of it to be honest with you because i haven't used it and i don't know how long but there is a driver out there and i think it's on the play store that you can get and you can install it they'll charge you a fiver but it means you can plug in interfaces and stuff but with android you really got to do your homework okay with an awful lot of interfaces that you can get um this is just a super simple basic interface but it plugs into my computer it plugs into my iphone it plugs into my ios device so i can do tons of work i don't know if 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 um as ios users you know of a thing called cubasis and it's a full daw with reverbs and eqs and the works all in an ios device it's phenomenal piece of kit right blows my mind every time i see it right and I, i'd sit up there of a weekend and crack out a bit of tunes and whatever else on this just for the crack you know and it's just brilliant absolutely brilliant but with ios device there seems to be much more focus on you know the creative apps you know recorders music things virtual synthesizers etc and the fact that most of these 
the a lot of these devices that you'd be looking at, including handheld recorders, can work as an audio interface as plug and play. Which means that, right, I take the USB out of this and I can go straight into my I, iPad, okay, with Cubasis. And now I can plug in drums, guitars, bass guitars, synthesizers with my virtual uh, synthesizers that I have in my iOS device and I have a whole band going on there, man. Or else, again, I could go iPad in my bag, this simple interface, okay, plug it into my iOS device, or if I get the driver, the um, Android device, plug in my two microphones. There's me, there's Ted, okay? I have control over their volume of the signal coming into the interface there. Set of headphones, okay? Here, you gotta see, let me just have a look here because I don't, didn't put my glasses on. Where is it? Okay, so you got your mix and you got your signal coming in, okay, here. Uh, you got your headphone volume, so you're deaf as a post, you turn it right up to the top, and then your output to the computer. On the back, you got uh, your USB, and I want to look at this in two seconds. There's your outputs to, say, a set of speakers or something like that, okay? So now you can plug those up to a set of speakers, and now you have a full little studio thing going on, okay? And remember I was telling you about phantom power? That's so super important. Little switch, ping, and now all my microphones are powered, okay? If you're not getting the signal from your microphone and you've turned up the volume on this, you'll get a little red light because it'll tell you that this is on, okay? Turn on your phantom power and then you know that your microphone should be powered, okay? If you're not sure whether it needs power or not, okay? Super important to check, yeah? The other thing about this little interface is amazing, right? And I love it. If I flick it over to there, there's another US, little USB here. It works off um, USB power, okay? Which means that I can get a battery bank, okay? And literally plug this into my iOS device and plug in, go down to the park and record any interviews I want or sound effects or things like that. I've been up in the mountains with this thing here into my laptop. I have all my super duper microphones pointing all sorts of ways and I'm recording super high quality audio with this. This is an audio interface. This records super high quality. It's not quality that you necessarily would need for your podcast, but it's off the scale, you know, it's off the scale, the quality of these things. And they come in all shapes and sizes and all sorts of prices as well. So when you're buying an interface, I will say to you guys, um, have a look around, okay? See what's out there. The super expensive ones, but they do all the bells and the whistles. And there's ones that are really dedicated to music. And there's some other ones that are just basic ones. You just lash it in, plug and play, you get going, okay? So have a real look around because you, you, you can save yourself a fortune by not buying all the bells and the whistles because you don't need them you don't necessarily need them especially for just you know recording a really good recording for your podcast okay so, Keith, so sorry i was hi, going to yeah. just say there um sarah was actually just saying could you explain a little bit more about the interface and i think you actually just did that so sarah i don't know oh, really? if you had a premonition but if, there, if if there's anything else you need to know ask a question and also um Damien. Hi, Damien. Uh, he asks, uh, he says, really interesting so far. Just wondered uh, if, hang on, sorry, I've just lost Damien's com uh, comment there. One minute. Yeah. He says, just wondered if you'll be up, uh, if you'll be showing a basic home setup for recording narration whilst eliminating room tone and reverb. Okay. Let me talk to you about room tone and reverb. Damon, I'll give you your tenor later because I have this all teed up. Uh, room tone and reverb. What does he mean by that, I suppose, for the, for the people that wouldn't necessarily know what's going on there? So I'm sitting in this studio and it's all lovely and it's quiet and it's, I got my microphone and it's all the walls are treated and I've got, yeah, I got a flat surface in front of me. Um, but the amount of reflection 
that I'm talking about or room tone that I'm talking about is really, really reduced down. OK, because I have all the walls, the floor, the ceiling, the whole building is like suspended midair. OK, so that reduces the amount of interference or the amount of room tone or whatever. So, Damien, first things first, the proximity of the microphone is so super important. OK, you don't want to be going. Well, maybe you do, depending on the, the timber of your delivery that you want to give. If it is that late night FM radio kind of thing. Yes. But if we're having a conversation, if I'm talking to somebody, I don't go. I don't walk up to the guy in the shop and say, please, could I have a maybe a cup of coffee? You know, I say, excuse me, could I have a cup of coffee? That's how people receive the message. Because, and I'm, I'm an awful man for the message. It's all about the message. What's the point in doing one of these podcasts if you're not trying to convey what you believe in or, or you feel, okay? And ultimately, a podcast is a communication. You're trying to communicate with like-minded people, okay? And if you come in with all sorts of techniques that aren't natural to the human condition of receiving messages like a conversation or listening to the radio or whatever, the FM late night radio is perfectly fine for that context. But in a context of having a conversation and talking about the history of, I don't know, something, synthesizers, we communicate face to face as human beings. We evolve that way. OK, so our bodies kind of are prepared to receive messages that way as well. OK, so it's super important how we deliver that message to whoever we're talking to. So proximity of the mic is super important. OK, the next point I'll say to you, Damien, is and this is ultimately um, the first step on the road to training your ears because I know for a fact uh, I give out about the people that are producing these podcasts and the quality of the audio is awful again you're not communicating correctly you're not bringing the message correctly you're cutting the ears off people because it's so badly recorded distortion loads of room tone okay interference you know, Zoom meetings that are all breaking up all the time and you're missing half the conversation, but they still put those things into their podcasts. There's so much we could be talking about tonight. Anyway, we, we'll deal with that again. OK, but that said, um, it's so super important that you just get it right from the get go. OK, let me just play you something here, Damien, that I did today. Right. And this is all in the context of whether you're using a handheld recorder or setting up some microphones for yourself and Ted to record your, your podcast on a Saturday afternoon before you go off and edit those recordings. So training your ear is something you need to develop. So you can hear problems that wouldn't necessarily be on your radar because they're not necessarily on your radar, if you understand, in your every day. So you having a conversation with somebody in a kitchen is totally fine because your brain is an amazing thing. It, it just sweeps out all the extraneous noise and focuses on that conversation. But when you're recording something, you don't have that luxury. It's an awful thing. You have to get rid of the extraneous noise mechanically or you do what you can to record it without the extraneous noise. So I'm having a conversation with somebody in my kitchen the dishwasher is on, there's all that noise, face to face, we don't hear the dishwasher, we hear each other. I have the same conversation with my pal in the kitchen with the dishwasher on, there's <laughs> all over the recordings. And believe me, the, the technology to get rid of those, as brilliant as it is, might necessarily be as brilliant to get rid of all of it and give you a really clean recording. Okay. So starting to listen to where you are and what you're doing is so super important from the get go. 
So you now have a training going on so you can hear certain room tones. Okay, let me just show you, for example. Okay, so I'm going to click here and I'm going to play this. So here I am in a kitchen, lots of hard surfaces. Can you all hear we that? Got counters, we got walls with yeah. tiles, we got metal surfaces. And uh, this is kind of very, very reflective. So there's a lot of sound bouncing around all these hard surfaces. So many's the time in off decline battlements, yea to chimney tops, but to see Pompeii pass. So you can hear the echo. Okay. Let us just pause and we'll. So a bit of Shakespeare. Thought I'd bring up the, the quality of the whole production. You know what I mean? We need to get a bit of class in there. Sorted. Now, that was in a kitchen. So you're looking at all these hard surfaces, you know, which is crazily bright. Fabulous for recording a guitar or a vocal or something like that, maybe. Whatever floats your boat. Now have a listen to this. So here we are in a living room and there's lots of soft surfaces. There's chairs and there's couches and there's uh, curtains on the walls. Um, there are some hard surfaces, but it's much less reflective. Okay. So you can hear now the big difference between the two type of rooms. Okay, so imagine just for pig iron, I'm just going to go over to here and have a listen to this. So again, we're in a different room. I said a different surface. I meant a different room. And we're in a bathroom now. So all the walls are tiles, the floor is tiles, hard. So can you hear the difference there? Again, we're back into a really bright space. So the reason I'm playing you these is I want you to consider where you're recording. We've talked about the proximity of the microphone and Damien, you brought it up beautifully. OK, um, we've talked about the proximity. The further this microphone is away from me and my mouth, the more room I'm going to be picking up. So if that room is really reflective, we're going to get loads of echo and, and room tone and noise on the microphone. It's called signal to noise ratio. The signal is my voice going down the microphone, but it's all that extraneous noise. How much extraneous noise do you get in comparison to the really lovely signal? OK, have a listen to this, right? This is a cupboard. So here we are in another room and this room is a linen closet of all things. So I've stepped into my closet just to see the difference in sound. And believe me, there are professional artists recording professional voiceovers in linen closets since the lockdown. If we were recording remotely or whatever else, I recorded a whole movie like that with four actors in different <laughs> different closets around the country. Anyway, you get a beautiful absorbance in that space. It's really dry and warm. It's great. OK, so let's just have a look at this. If you need, you can't yourself and Ted can't go into the linen closet. So but we are not going to get too many hard services in here, apart from the ceiling and the roof. So this is a bedroom. carpets on the floor, or rugs on the floor. I've also drawn the curtains, which is a massive have difference to this. in the amount of reflection going on. Let me pull them back. So now you can hear much. It's much more live, even with the curtains pulled open. But that's a lovely space because you have all those soft surfaces. You've got space to do it in. Now, whether your partner is going to give off reams to you, <laughs> yourself and Ted are spending the whole afternoon upstairs recording your podcast while she wants to have a snooze or whatever. Right. But it is a good space, you know, and a living room is a good space and draw the curtains in the living room if you possibly can. So what you're trying to do is build up as much absorbing material around you as possible. So Damien, proximity and listen, I'm telling you lads, training the ears is so super important. And if you do get your hands on a handheld recorder, excuse me, if you do get your hands on a handheld recorder, walk into the kitchen. Hello, how are you? My name is Ted. I just wanted to do this voice recording. Go off into your living room. Hello, my name is Ted. I just wanted to do this kind of recording. Same delivery, same pitch, same everything. OK, and then come out. Plug in your headphones and have a listen out of that space. OK, and now you'll understand. Your surroundings, you'll start to 
know what it actually sounds like. So you guys could have Ted and yourself were going to sit down at the kitchen table and do this and go, oh, but hang on a second. If I can get a much cleaner recording, then I'll definitely consider going into the front room on this. Okay. So that'll help you immensely by getting much cleaner recordings with a good proximity and you're getting a really lovely sound as well, depending on the mic. Okay. Some mics are just really, really nasty, you know. To be honest with you, the cheaper you go, the worse it gets. OK, I mean, you buy something for three euro on eBay or three dollars on eBay, you're going to buy a pig, you know. So um, no offense to pigs, but try and, and get something at least a little bit decent. OK, for yourselves. OK, so. If you do get yourself some USB microphones and things are working out for you with the podcast and you're getting a, you're gathering a few listeners and you're getting some traction on this whole thing well then maybe it's worth investing a little bit more okay so now you're investing a little bit more maybe i'll just go you know birthday's coming up christmas is coming up pay rise coming up maybe you just get a little bit better microphone or at that stage, you will have exercised um, what you're doing, okay? Because there is nothing, uh, you'd, the, the, the quickest way to learn any of this and understand what I'm talking about is literally grab a microphone, grab a handheld recorder, go into these rooms, go into other places, go outside without a windshield on your microphone and do a bit of recording. OK, go down to the street, record your granny in her kitchen, bring back the recording and have a listen to it without a pop shield, without a, a, a windshield, without a mic stand. Seriously, just it, it's a, a, a big learning curve. It's a very pleasant learning curve because it's so creative, to be honest with you, that you can go into all these different spaces and you can use these different spaces. Uh, to embellish um, your podcast as well, do you know? I mean, imagine you're talking about a, imagine it was a D and D podcast, and you're you're talking about the story going on, and you walk into such and such a space, and then you could use the reverb from the bathroom to deliver that section of whatever, you know? And that's how we use reverbs specifically in film and TV and game and all that, just to embellish and enhance and and make make the sense of what we're doing in that space more real do you know um keith sorry yes yeah, so this is a good important. point hi I've peter got a, i've got um um uh, amanda from tunbridge wells hi amanda um and hi, she's amanda. just asked us she said i've saved up about 200 pounds which i think is probably somewhere between 235 or 240 euros or so yeah. for a microphone i was thinking of getting a usb mic would you advise me to get maybe another mic? You mentioned a, a, a mic and an interface. Would I be better going that route? You see, Amanda, I feel that you would get much more bang for your book if you did go the interface and microphone route. OK, by you spending 200 quid on a USB microphone. Um, there are only certain types that will give you um, polar patterns, uh, 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 ways of recording two people at one time. OK, so if you had 200 quid and you bought. It's not a if you bought, say, the a kit, OK, interface microphone and headphones for 150 quid and got another microphone, beg, borrowed or rented another microphone. But you worked off the, at least that decent microphone and an interface. And then when your birthday did come around, everyone, hey, you know, go fund me a new microphone or something. <laughs> right. You go out and you get the extra microphone. But the thing is, you've got an interface and you can plug in a really, really top quality microphone in here and your original microphone in here. 
So now you're using the original or the top quality microphone. Ted is using the good, the 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 cheaper one. Okay. So, but you see, this is giving you more bang for your buck. You can use this with an iOS device. You can use it with a PC or a Mac. You can plug in microphones. You can plug in guitars. Imagine you started wanting to record your album, man. You know, you, there's so much more you can do with an interface and some microphones than you can with just a USB microphone. Okay, that, that, that would be my advice. I'm always one for bang for your buck and yeah. future thinking because it's such a major investment. It really is a large investment for an awful lot of people to buy a couple of microphones, an interface, even a lot of USB microphones are decent ones are expensive, you know? So it's future proofing things. You have an interface like that. You can put it in your bag. You can go down the local park. You can plug it into your Mac or your PC or your desktop or your iOS device. And you can do that interview there, do you know? And it's, it just gives you wings. It gives you, it gives you more scope to do more stuff as you develop and you, and your confidence builds as you go out and you record more and you find your recordings and you realize when you did record Mrs. Jessup with the sugar uh, interview that there was a little bit of wind on there and geez, I'd love to have gotten that right. You won't get it wrong the next time. You absolutely will not. You will absolutely learn very fast, you know, and your skill set is coming up. Your confidence is coming up. And man, you're going to be f knocking it out of the park before you know it, you know, really. That's great. Does Keith, that answer your question? Yeah, um, well, I, I, I hope so, and I hope um, they'll get back to me if not. But also on that, uh, <laughs> Ronan from Freshwood Kilkenny. Hello, Ronan. Very nice to have you with us. Um, he asks, is it better to get two mics the same? Um, okay. So th in the context of the timber of what you're recording, pretty much, yeah. You know, because as I say to you, those little cheap, you know, imagine you bought one for three bucks on eBay and you bought another one for 150 bucks, you will notice a significant difference. And the cheaper the microphone, the nastier they sound, to be honest with you. Yeah. Okay. So um, you don't have to go out and get a pair of matched paired microphones which are a little bit more expensive. Like, I mean, this microphone is a matched pair to its brother or sister, okay? And they go through rigorous testing to find a matched pair, okay? With them practically the exact same as this. You don't need to go to those extremes. If you went out and you bought two of these, okay? Two of those, okay? They're going to sound the same. Same manufacturer, same manufacturing process, you know, same components, then bang on. You're saving yourself loads of work that you're not trying to make one really crap microphone sound somewhat decent because you don't have, you really don't have the skill base to do that right now, especially if you're starting out. So yeah, by all means, if, if you can, two microphones of the same ilk would all be good and then again you might need two microphones do you know if it's me and ted i mean depending on the pickup pattern how the microphone picks up i mean this picks up straight up that way okay whereas this picks up a bit wider okay if there's a bit more so i could be over here and ted could be over here so ted what do you think about the thing well jesus do you know what i don't know you know so I know there's a lot of movement and chair movement there, but that's just me doing that thing. There's also a thing called polar patterns. Okay. And polar patterns is the area that the microphone picks up sound from. So there are some microphones that you can switch your polar pattern and it picks up from this side and this side. So I put this microphone between the two of us and now it's picking up two signals at the same time. Okay. Now you do end up with one file with both of you talking on the same file, which can be tricky for editing. But if, if you guys start to get into a rhythm of I deliver the question, Ted delivers the answer, just leave a little beat between, then editing isn't a problem. And and you'll only garner that um that 
technique or that workflow or that um, ease of use by literally practicing and working it and then you bring it into the editor and you listen to it when you're editing your podcast and you go jeez I'll do that again or I won't do that again or maybe we should record that again you know so yeah it's super important I would I personally yeah I'd get two two of the same ilk if that answers your question have I lost everyone hello Am I gone? Still good here. So did that answer your question, Damien and uh, Amanda and who was it from Kildare? Ronan, Ronan from Kildare. Yeah. I uh, hope that answered your Kilkenny. question. Uh, oh, Kilkenny. There was, yeah, there was one more from uh, I'll be social. <laughs> Yeah, I, I wouldn't get Mikilda mixed up. <laughs> and that's from a plastic paddy as well. Keith. I'm um, actually about to drive down there now. Uh, <laughs> we've, we've got um, one more if that's all right, or uh, maybe two yeah, totally. more if that's okay. We've got, uh, I think, Laura, and forgive me if that's not your name, Laura or Laura, and she's just asked, um, she said you mentioned something about a package that Steinberg do with the microphone and the uh, interface. And I think she saw Dom Steinberg uh, Wave Lab casting. So she said, would that be Brilliant. compatible with Wave Lab cast? So. Totally, totally and utterly and totally. Um, it's it is. I bought this individual. I didn't buy the pack, but I th you get the the 22. OK, there's a couple of versions of it, but you get that little interface, which is runs on um, power banks. And USB power, and uh, you got your phantom power, and you got your two inputs, both instruments and uh, microphones. That this microphone, this that's the actual microphone. I have it this way because I was being realistic, as if I was using it properly. But you see that that's the Steinberg mic. So that's the one that comes with the UR. Which way is that going? There you go. That's the one that comes with the UR twenty two, and then you get a set of headphones. I don't know whether Dom, Dom wears them a lot. I've seen him in his uh, stuff and he wears them a lot. And the three of those come in a pack. And maybe I just did a really quick flick uh, products. And maybe I'll be able to show you here. That's just, there you go. Okay. It's called the UR 22C recording pack see the way i start to flicker when i do that it's the monitor up there lads. it's desperate see that so there you go with that pack cans oh, yeah. interface mic you know and listen what more do you need i know you could get an extra mic or something like that okay they have a mic clip there smashing and i tell you lads these interfaces you know they are very very handsome devices okay you can go up to 192 kilohertz which is super 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 duper and because you have the power options on those that's why i love that little interface because you have the power options you can go and you can walk up a mountain and you can still use it you don't need to be plugging in a big wall wart or power supply you know it's um it's super super piece of kit and to be honest with you, I have no idea what that costs, but I know it works with your iPad as well. And I just saw that there at the corner of my eye. Of course it does. Um, I'll be honest with you, it's not expensive for what you get and the amount of future proofing you have in one fell swoop there. It's bang on, bang on. No, that's so awesome, Keith. That's really fantastic. Um, I'm, if you if it's if you don't mind if I could just do one more question it's from Sarah sure. who's just said this is just going back to earlier in the session which she just says uh, would you use the windshield on the iPhone totally see this I have a little windshield for it I I, I wouldn't use personally from bitter experience throughout uh, my career I wouldn't walk outside a uh, outside with a microphone without you know you get them in all shapes and sizes 
okay um and to be honest with you you can get little um ebay ones and i'll be honest with you they're not they're not save yourself the pain there's another one for that recorder i've got more here you know that fits onto one of these long microphones my shotgun microphones i don't walk outside the door without them to be honest with you because you can have a recording destroyed so quickly with just a breath of wind now to be fair right as brilliant as these are you have to be realistic you, you can't walk in, out into a hurricane and expect these to do a perfect job but if you found yourself in even with your windshield on okay um doing an interview just say to your interviewee or whoever you're doing do you mind if we go around the corner you don't necessarily have to record it where you're especially if it's only audio you don't have to record it on the high street or on the top of a cliff you know you can duck in behind a rock and cut out an awful lot of wind blowing directly on you and the microphone or else just get yourself right there's my recorder get my body in the way of the wind you put your hand around it like this you know it won't affect the timber too badly you know but all you're doing is protecting your recordings they're like your babies okay you have to mind them because especially starting out to try and clean those things up is a nightmare and if you don't clean them up people are going to go what was that oh i can't hear that oh it's awful recordings oh my ears are bleeding because it's such bad recordings and it's cutting the ears off me so that's the last time i'm going to listen to that podcast so now you've lost a punter okay so it's so super important that you keep the quality up there from the get-go so you're getting your message across you're garnering the interest you're garnering the 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 audience and you're all loving it you don't have to worry about all the crap of crap recordings and stuff like that you just sit down and enjoy themselves you know um it's a real focus from the very very first moment you start producing your own stuff and when you're sitting down writing your script and your wireframe of your show what you have to do what you need to do it and where you're going to do it always have that in the back of your mind it'll save you an awful lot of pain and suffering yeah that's brilliant keith um keith i've got an awful lot of um, messages saying thank you so uh uh from all over the place so uh yona's just said thanks that was brilliant keith i've got about i'll forward them all on to you so um, I have a many, feeling, lads. Thank have you. A feeling we'll want to ask you back. I think you've you've been very popular. So, um, listen. I'd like to extend my thanks to you personally. It's been great to have you. Uh, thank you for your time. Um, I'm going to hand you over to Susan. Thanks again, Keith. Take good thanks. care. Thanks. That was a pure again. joy, lads. Thanks a million. Have a lovely evening. I'm sure we'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. Thank you, mate. Thank you. See you later. Bye See bye, you guys. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Thank you so much for your questions and great feedback. We really appreciate it. I also just wanted to remind you about tomorrow's session. We're delighted to have Jennifer Dollard joining Liam on the show. Jennifer is content director for Acast, one of the leading podcast publishers in the world. And tomorrow, Jennifer is going to be talking about a subject that you are all keen to learn about, how to monetize your podcasts. Jennifer is one of our favorite people and it promises to be a fantastic session, so don't miss it.